Allosaurus was the most successful predator of the late Jurassic. At 36 feet long, which is about as big as an entire basketball court, this dinosaur wasn't only massive, but it was also one of the fiercest carnivores of its time. And being the top boss among all meat-eating dinosaurs meant this big guy had some serious competition. But with its thin teeth and delicate jaw, how did it manage to become the most successful predator of its time? Allosaurus's hunting tactics were truly out of this world. Stay tuned as we dive into its clever strategies and unique way of life. Allosaurus lived in North America about 155 to 145 million years ago, wandering through open plains and dense forests. It was one of the first dinosaurs scientists really got to know well because it caught everyone's attention. First, it was one of the largest predators around back then, rivaling even the mighty Tyrannosaurus. Its formidable size and powerful jaws put it at the top of the food chain. This meant it had a massive influence on its ecosystem. The body of Allosaurus was like many other animals from the Mesozoic era. Although it was large for a theropod dinosaur in the mid-Jurassic, it lived directly alongside some truly gargantuan sauropods, and they were its main prey. It was a big hunter that walked on two legs, with its body held horizontally. It had a really large head, measuring around three feet in length. That's like the size of a grown penguin. And of course, inside it was a huge skull. It had a short but thick neck, a long tail to balance its massive body, and relatively small arms sticking out from its torso. The biggest Allosaurus we know of was about 9.2 meters long, from its nose to its tail which is pretty large for a dinosaur from the Jurassic period, but it's smaller compared to later dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus. On average, the most studied species, Allosaurus fragilis, was about 8.5 meters long, which is about the size of a London bus. But even though it wasn't the biggest dinosaur around, with a weight of nearly two metric tons, it was still well equipped to hunt large, plant-eating dinosaurs. The skull of Allosaurus is one of the most unique features among theropods, especially those from the Jurassic era. It was long and deep with sharp, backward-facing teeth that were perfect for catching big prey. Its jaws were also powerful, which tells you it could apply a lot of pressure when catching its prey. There was also a bony horn-like structure above its eyes. These horns might have formed a crest when the dinosaur was alive, possibly brightly colored. This could have helped Allosaurus communicate and attract mates, or signal to others of its kind. Now this dinosaur had a pretty large torso, but it had relatively fragile bones supporting it. Surprisingly, these bones were still strong enough to protect its internal organs while allowing it to move easily. These bones also helped keep its overall weight down. Like many big theropods, Allosaurus had small front limbs compared to its long, strong back legs. Each hand had three fingers, each tipped with sharp, curved claws meant for cutting into the flesh of its prey. Even though its arms were small, they were still powerful and effective for hunting. It also had long back legs, and hey, they were strong. Although their claws weren't as sharp as those of other theropods from the same time period. At the end of Allosaurus's body was a long, tapering tail, typically measuring between four and five meters in length. This tail served as a counterbalance when the dinosaur was moving, whether walking or running. It helped keep the dinosaur balanced, preventing it from being too top-heavy and thus ensuring its success in hunting. Speaking of its hunting success, are you wondering what this big guy liked to chew on? Well, Allosaurus was the most successful predator of the late Jurassic, and our paleontology department seems to agree that it actively hunted large animals. In fact, there's strong evidence of it attacking Stegosaurus. We found an Allosaurus tail vertebrae with a wound from a Stegosaurus tail spike and a Stegosaurus neck plate with a wound that matches an Allosaurus snout. But sauropods were probably on Allosaurus's menu too, either as prey or scavenging targets. We've seen marks on sauropod bones that match Allosaurus teeth, but given how huge sauropods were, Allosaurus might not have been able to take down fully grown sauropods unless it hunted in groups. Its skull was relatively small, its teeth weren't huge, and it had a bite force similar to that of a leopard. Sauropods, on the other hand, were massive. 
maybe Allosaurus preferred hunting younger sauropods instead of adults. It's even been compared to saber-toothed mammals from later eras. A lot of similar features like weaker jaw muscles, but stronger neck muscles, and the ability to open its jaws really wide have been found. Even though Allosaurus didn't have saber teeth, it was thought that it might have used its jaw and neck muscles to deliver powerful slashing attacks that would have weakened its prey over time. A recent study using computer models looked into how Allosaurus actually hunted, and it turns out, despite its scary teeth, its bite wasn't super strong. But despite being small, its skull was really tough, like a fortress. So, instead of crushing bones, it probably used a slash and slice method. This means it used its strong neck and skull to drive its teeth into prey and tear off chunks of meat. This research helps us understand how Allosaurus survived, or should we say thrived, as a hunter millions of years ago. But what was its habitat like? And which other animals did it coexist with? Well, Allosaurus was a dominant predator in the Morrison Formation, and it makes up around 70 to 75% of large carnivore fossils found there. This formation was a semi-arid environment with seasonal changes, featuring flat floodplains and varying vegetation, from forests to savannas. The area was rich in fossils, including diverse plant and animal species. Besides Allosaurus, other dinosaurs like Apatosaurus, Camarasaurus, Diplodocus and Stegosaurus also lived there. Allosaurus shared its habitat with fellow predators like Ceratosaurus and Torvosaurus, each likely occupying different ecological niches. Ceratosaurus and Torvosaurus may have preferred wetter areas, while Allosaurus was adapted to drier floodplains. Evidence suggests that Allosaurus was both a predator and sometimes even prey. Scavenging behavior is indicated by bite marks found on Allosaurus's bones, likely from other carnivores like Ceratosaurus or Torvosaurus. Similarly, Allosaurus was found to scavenge on its own species, as shown by bite marks on Allosaurus bones. The many bite marks might mean they relied more on scavenging when food was scarce, or maybe they just really couldn't stand each other. We'll talk about the real reason behind this behavior later in the video. Now, what was their skin like? Well, fossil evidence tells us that these guys came with real scaly reptilian skin. In one case, a young Allosaurus had small scales, around 1 to 3 millimeters wide. Another set, possibly from the tail base, had larger scales, some reaching up to 2 centimeters wide. But what about their brains? We mentioned earlier that they had big heads. So did this beast have a mega brain as well? Well, based on scans of its brain structure, Allosaurus had a brain more similar to crocodiles than birds, which are also archosaurs like dinosaurs. Its inner ear structure suggests its skull was held nearly horizontal, not tipped strongly up or down. This also means it was better at hearing low-frequency sounds and might have struggled with subtle noises. Its sense of smell was probably sharp, with large olfactory bulbs for detecting scents. But this was pretty standard for dinosaurs its size. So were these features enough for it to exist as a solitary predator, or did it live in groups? Since the 1970s, people have thought Allosaurus hunted in groups, especially to take down big dinosaurs like sauropods. Some even think they brought food back to their young. But there's not a lot of proof for this. In fact, there's more evidence that Allosaurus mostly fought each other, rather than working together. There are signs of fights between these guys, like bite marks on skulls and injuries to their belly bones. Some researchers think that when you see a bunch of Allosaurus fossils together, it's not because they hunted together, but because they were drawn to a spot where there was already food, maybe like a dead or injured Allosaurus. This could also explain why there are a lot of young Allosaurus fossils found together, as younger ones might have been more likely to get hurt in these situations. There's even evidence that this dinosaur might have sometimes eaten others of its kind. This is due to the fact that some of their teeth have been discovered mixed in with their bones. So, while it's possible Allosaurus hunted in groups sometimes, it's kind of more probable they were more interested in their own meals than working together. Now let's roll the clock back to when this dinosaur was first discovered. The story of how Allosaurus was discovered and studied is a bit tangled due to a lot of names being thrown around. 
This happened during what's known as the Bone Wars in the late 1800s. It all started when a bone was found in Colorado by Ferdinand van der Veer Hayden in 1869. People thought it was just a petrified horse hoof. Hayden sent it to Joseph Lady, who first thought it belonged to a European dinosaur, but later decided it needed its own name, Antrodemus. The name Allosaurus came from a small collection of bones found later, including bits of vertebrae, a rib, a tooth, and part of an arm bone. These were named Allosaurus fragilis in 1877 by Othniel Charles Marsh. The name means strange lizard because its bones were different from other dinosaurs known at the time. Fragilis means fragile because of some light features in the bones. Now, if you're wondering where one might find one of these fossils, the Morrison Formation is a layer of rock dating back to the late Jurassic period, about 155 to 148 million years ago. It covers much of the Western United States and holds many dinosaur fossils, including Apatosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Allosaurus. The formation's river channels hold the most dinosaur bones, Notably, two almost complete Allosaurus skeletons known as Big Al and Big Al II were discovered there. And at Dinosaur National Monument, the wall of bones remains preserved to show the huge amounts of fossils found in the Morrison Formation. As for this dinosaur's family tree, Allosaurus was part of a group called Allosauridae, which includes big meat-eating dinosaurs in the Conosauria group. The name Allosauridae was made up by a scientist named Othniel Charles Marsh in 1878 but it wasn't commonly used until the 1970s. Before that, people often used Megalosauridae for big meat-eating dinosaurs, including Allosaurus. This caused some confusion, especially since Antrodemus was sometimes used instead of Allosaurus around the same time. It's important to remember this when looking at old books and articles written before James Madsen's study in 1976. After Madsen's study, Allosauridae became the preferred term, although it wasn't very well defined. People often used it for various big meat-eating dinosaurs, especially those larger and more famous than Megalosaurids. Some other dinosaurs thought to be related to Allosaurus included Indosaurus, Comsosuchus, and Stoxosaurus. But with more recent research, we've learned that none of these dinosaurs are actually Allosaurids. Now why did this amazing, powerful beast die out? The truth is, Allosaurus probably died out around 144 million years ago, we're not exactly sure why, but there are some ideas. One is that there was a really bad drought back then, which led to lots of dinosaurs, including Allosaurus, dying off. This theory gets support from finding big fossils in Utah, but there's also a new idea based on a fossil called Big Al 2, which had some health problems. Maybe diseases were spreading, and some pathological infections played a role in the species' decline. In the end, it's clear that Allosaurus ruled as one of the top predators of the late Jurassic. It made use of clever hunting strategies to become one of the most successful carnivores of its time. With its unique skull and powerful jaws, it could take down large prey with ease. You bet, no small dino wanted to get in this guy's way when it left home. And that's a wrap. If you could bring back Allosaurus and pit it against another dinosaur, would you choose the Tyrannosaurus rex or the armored Ankylosaurus? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.